Good morning, church. Good to see you. Good to see you here on this drizzly um, summer morning. Weird weather again. It seems like every Sunday we talk about that. <laughs> like 70 degrees in August. Come on now. Can't be. But great to have you here and God's blessings to you as we worship our Lord and King. Our theme this morning is a continuing theme on Jesus being the bread of life. And so think about that um, as we worship this day, as we sing, as we pray. You're going to hear that theme coming through again and again. The bread of life Jesus is. So let us feed on Jesus um, this morning and every day. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ, we have the nourishment, the sustenance we need in life. Help us this morning to feed on you. And to know that in Jesus Christ we are fully satisfied and that we don't have any and have to starve or thirst because you give us everything, especially your grace found on the cross. So bless our worship now. Open up our hearts and minds as we focus upon you, the giver of all things. Through the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the bread of life. We pray in his holy name. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we gather to worship and receive the gifts of God's grace through word and sacrament, let us first confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you and others. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, 
but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's holy word. The Old Testament lesson, 1 Kings, beginning of chapter 19. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the swords. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me be ever so severely if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judea, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat under it, and prayed that he may die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by the food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of our Lord. Good morning. morning. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitudes of your mind, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. 
Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated as we sing together at the Lamb's High Feast we sing.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father who created you, from God his Son who redeems your life and is the true bread of life, and through the power and blessing of the Holy Spirit who brings you into that one true faith. Amen. Marvin came to work with both ears bandaged. His friend at work says, what happened to you? Why are your ears bandaged? Well, he said, last night I was watching the ball game on TV and my wife was behind me ironing some shirts. She left for a moment and then all of a sudden the telephone rang and I picked up the iron instead of the phone. But both ears are bandaged. Why are both ears bandaged? Well, as soon as I hung up, the same guy called back again. Do we learn anything, really? I mean, ears are very important in life, for sure. God created our ears to listen. We have two ears, one mouth to listen is twice as much as we speak, in fact. And yet, how much do we hear? Hearing, though, is just, well, sounds that come to your ears. Listening is deciphering those sounds. But how much do we learn? If we only listen to about 10% of what we hear, how much do we actually learn from what we listen to? Probably a very, very small percentage for sure. Well, in that gospel lesson today, Jesus says there, it's not all who listen to the Father come to me, but all who listen and learn from the Father come to me. Notice that. It's got the word learn in there also. It begs the question, how much are you really learning? How much are you learning? Now, you have heard sort of this lesson for the last few weeks. We're going really through the Gospel of John chapter 6, which is kind of an interesting study. A few weeks ago, you heard about Jesus feeding 5,000 or more people. And then there was a little interlude as Jesus went from that site across the Sea of Galilee. And remember, he stilled the storm. Last week, he's now on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and he says to the people, I am the bread of life. And he continues that again here this day. I am the bread of life. And actually, the story will continue even next week at the end of John chapter 6. But the people, and these are people that are coming out from Jerusalem. These are the legalists. The Pharisees, they're checking Jesus out to see what's going on with him. Why has he got this crowd around him? We hear about miracles he's doing. Who is this? I mean, they're grumbling. They're mumbling. They're, they're making accusations and so forth about Jesus. They can't believe he's the bread of life because the bread of life is only reserved for the Messiah, for the promised one who is going to come. That's who the bread of life is. And you certainly aren't a Messiah, Jesus. I mean, look at you. We know who your parents are. Father was a carpenter. Well, that's what you're supposed to be. You don't look like you're divine at all. You know, you don't act like it either. Where's your military? Where, where, where's everything to take control of this world and beat up the Romans? No, that's what they were looking at. And so they are grumbling about Jesus. And they were making accusations, therefore, and assuming who they think Jesus was, assuming. Now, assumptions, they get you into trouble, don't they, sometimes? We do, when we think about the assumptions we make, we can really get into trouble. They were making assumptions about who Jesus was. And so they were making assumptions there and being very critical. And so they were hearing what Jesus was saying, but were they asking him questions? Were they searching the scriptures themselves? Were they even talking to Mary, his mother, because Mary pondered everything in her heart? Nothing like that. All they were doing was hearing out of criticism or hearing out of judgment or hearing out of superiority or hearing out of resentment. That's what they were doing, hearing in that sense. They were not really listening at all and certainly they were not learning. But before we accused those people back then, how about people who are even faithful? I gotta go back to that story uh, about Elijah just for a moment that Nick read before. 
I mean, it's a really interesting story if you read the whole thing. That story is fascinating simply because here Elijah, right, the great prophet Elijah, he and Moses, the two greatest prophets, here Elijah is in a competition actually in that section from 1 Kings. And that competition is with the, the Baal worshipers, the idol worshipers. And the competition was simply this. It was, we're going to put a sacrifice in this altar, and then you call your gods to see if you can burn up that sacrifice, and then I'll call on my god. Well, of course, these Baal worshipers, those false prophets, they were doing all kinds of gyrations and so forth, and there's no fire to burn that sacrifice. Elijah calls on the Lord God, and fire comes down from heaven and burns that sacrifice. And not only was that sacrifice burned, but all the prophets of Baal were killed. Now, Elijah won that competition. He saw the great power and might of God, right? And then he's scared. Why? Because he hears that king, wicked Queen Jezebel is now wanting to kill him. And so he runs off scared. He's got nothing. He is frightened to the point where he actually says, and this is what was read before, says, God, kill me. Take my life. I don't want to live here. I don't want to die by the hands of wicked Queen Jezebel. And so he's pleading in that way. He's hungry. He's thirsty. He's got nothing. He falls asleep. There is food for him. It's provided for him, water for him, strength for him, nourishment for him. But the point there is this. Here, Elijah, who saw the great power, care, presence of God in that competition, all of a sudden, he's got nothing. He says, God, you know, where are you? You're not taking care of me. I'm afraid. And isn't that us in the same way? I mean, you may have been going to Sunday school all your life. You're in church every week. You may read devotions. You may sing praises to God, but still... There's those moments when even though we know of God's blessings, and you can count God's blessings, I'm sure. You can start listing various things in your life. But then all of a sudden, like, where am I? You know, I have doubts there. I don't think God's taking care of me. You know, we're, we're the same kind of people. Even faithful people can be that way. Well, you are what you eat. You've heard that before. You are what you eat. I know for me, you know, you know how many, how many um, pizza pies are eaten every day in this country? You know how many? A hundred acres worth. A hundred acres worth. I mean, that's where people are. They're hungry for pizza. I mean, I ate half of it yesterday, I think, myself. You know, hungry for, for pizza in that case. Or, or in my particular case, you know, what do, I, what do I want so badly at night? Ice cream. Just call me moose. Why? Because I eat Moose Tracks ice cream from Friendly's is what I do. Or call me Rocky, Rocky Road or something is like my favorite as well. You know? That's what I consume. That's what I want to have myself. Well, how about you? What are you hungry for? What's your diet about? And of course, I'm not talking about physical food. What I'm really speaking about is what's really important in your life. Well, what we need to do is feed on Jesus who satisfies us in life. That truly is what fulfills us and what we need on a daily, daily basis. You look at that lesson from Ephesians read before. A lot of stuff in that lesson from Ephesians. But St. Paul says you've got to take off the old self and put on the new self. That new self is in Christ. Because when you feed on Jesus, you take Jesus into you. You become like Jesus. Not perfectly, of course, no way that's going to happen, but yet we become like Jesus in the sense of love and compassion instead of all those other things. You know, you may be feeding on things like hatred or a judgmental attitude or it's about you. Everything's about you. You have that kind of self-interest and egotism. You know, you're feeding on those matters and so forth which got to be put aside and you've got to feed on Jesus, whose mercy, whose forgiveness comes from the cross. So we can talk about your sin or my sin in this case, but the truth is, is we've got to feed on Jesus on a regular daily basis. 
so that we can be truly satisfied and have that sense of peace and security which only he can bring. You see, we do not come to the Father. We are drawn by God the Father through his word. And through that word of God, we come to the Father because it's that love that we hear about, that grace which we hear about, which actually brings us to God the Father. But when it uses that word drawn in that gospel lesson, there is a sense of resistance that's there too. It's kind of like fishermen, you know, dragging in a net of fish. They're drawing in that net themselves. And there's some resistance there. Resistance by the fish themselves. And it's even a struggle um, to draw that net in. Well, we too can reject God's grace. We can as well kind of refuse that and have a resistance about it. And yet it's God who's still trying to draw us to himself, bring us to himself through those words of the cross. And that's what we hear it. We hear about what God has done in Jesus' sacrifice on that cross of mercy. And that's what we should be striving for in life on a constant, constant basis. The Olympic Games ends today or ended last night. Competition, but do you see some of the faces of those athletes as they're striving toward the finish line? I mean, I thought, oh man, such focus yearning for that line there, every muscle, everything going in the same direction there to win the gold medal, to win the prize, to claim the victory. Well, in Jesus Christ, you already have that victory. That's what we should be doing, striving in that way, and yet the victory is assured. You've got the gold medal already in Christ because when he died on that cross, he defeated Satan. Jesus defeated sin and death. Jesus gave his life in that way out of great love for you. And now he draws us to the cross. And that's where we see that love, that compassion which he brings. Yet we are to be that way and live to live life that way each and every day. For when we do not partake of Jesus himself, we miss on life, both now and eternally. And notice the wording again in that gospel. How it's so much present tense. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Right now. Not I will be, but I am the bread of life. Everyone who eats, notice the present tense, eats of me. Drinks. Will never starve. Will never go hungry. Will never thirst. And I will give them life. That life is now. That life becomes eternal. And so that present life is now. You've started your eternity already. You ever think about that? You started your eternity at your baptism. And it continues today and tomorrow. You're in eternal life, in a sense. And so you live life that way, knowing that, yeah, I can have pizza pie in the sky when I die. Except I can start slicing right now as well. In other words, I can have a piece of what God gives to me in that sense of love and that joy which he brings. And so we have that. We have that spiritually. We have that physically. We have the gifts that God has given to us. And we celebrate all of that truth. We celebrate it in the sacrament of Holy Communion. For in a few minutes' time, you're going to receive bread in your hands, the body of Christ. Just one last little story. It was back to World War II, an ugly time, frankly, in Germany, when there, the Nazis, they would actually take hold of German boys, 10, 11, 12 years old, and they would put them in and train them to be in a junior Gestapo. I mean, that was like horrific right there. But they would take these boys from their homes and they would take them to a distant place and they would beat on them and train them not to love life at all, you know, to do the dirty work, you know, that's going to take place, they believed, years from then. And it was horrific. I mean, the boys, I mean, they were, you know, I don't know, not tortured, but semi. I mean, they were cruelly treated, let's put it that way, to kind of make them numb 
to real feelings at all. And so, yeah, it would be a real struggle for them. After the war, soon after the war, these boys had nothing. I mean, they were freed, but what are they going to do? They don't even know how to get back to their homes at this point, you know, which are hundreds of miles away. They had no food, they had no clothing, no nothing. Well, the Allies, when they came in, started to gather some of these boys up, and they brought them to a hospital situation where they could hopefully redeem them. But the boys, it was such a struggle. I mean, they'd be screaming at night in terror because of that previous year. One psychologist had an idea. He said, I'm going to feed you a lot at dinner, give you a really good meal, and then before you go to bed, I'm going to put a piece of bread in your hand. A piece of bread in your hand. And it worked. That piece of bread in their hand, they weren't supposed to eat. They're supposed to hold on to it through the night. And those boys, they slept through the night, now feeling secure, knowing that they are cared for, provided for, somebody loves me and wants me to get better. In a couple of minutes, you're going to have bread placed in your hand. Jesus himself. Remember, what Jesus gives to you is life. Pause for a moment before you take that bread and place it into your mouth. Realize that Jesus is the bread of life. It's the sustenance that you need for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Remember that what you place inside of you, you become. You are what you eat. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us to learn, not only to listen, but to learn, and to truly live out a life which is pleasing to you, showing forth that love and compassion to others. Help us, dear Lord, to understand that you are the one who sustains us, who lifts us, forgives us, and in the mercy from the cross, feeds us. And so thank you, dear Lord, for Jesus, the bread of life. May we live each day fully satisfied, knowing that in you, Christ Jesus, we have that life now and have that life eternally. Amen. May we stand and express our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And now with that confidence, that security, we can proclaim our faith by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And he ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for a brief announcement. Hello. Uh, I don't have a chance to look at the back of your bulletin, but we have a couple announcements to keep in mind. Uh, a congregational meeting will be held on uh, August 22nd uh, to, to discuss the school budget. Um, also, as well as uh, we have a new members class coming up uh, for September 19th. Um, if you check at 9 o'clock, um, it's a two-hour class. Please call to the church if you want to sign up. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, and about that new members class, um, not only you possibly, but you may know somebody as well to come to that class on that date and um, ask some questions, um, understand what is being taught here at Emmanuel Lutheran, and um, go through that process. So um, please talk to others about it, uh, as well as yourselves, to pro probably attend that class on that day. Thank you. At this time, let us gather a thank offering for the ministry here at Emmanuel Lutheran to this community 
and then we will stand and sing the offertory together. May we stand and sing together. of all look to you O Lord you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing incline now your ears to us Lord in your mercy preserve the pure proclamation of the gospel throughout all the world cause our congregation all congregations in our circuit district and synod to flourish and thrive make them strong witnesses to their confession of faith eager to show mercy on account of your steadfast mercy. Knit us together in unity of doctrine and love for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, give strength and courage to all pastors and all those who assist them, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression. By the example of Elijah and all who have gone before them, Bring them comfort through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Your and we pray at this time for Emmanuel Lutheran Church and school as well, as they continue to seek a pastor, a shepherd who will be here to grant that comfort and point the way to the cross. Bless these efforts, O oh Lord. And though at times it's quite frustrating and we get impatient, Lord, we know that you are preparing one to lead the flock here at Emmanuel Lutheran. So bless this process, O Lord, as divine as it is, and may we be faithful and trusting in you as we continue to serve you in mission and ministry. Lord, in your mercy, bless all families and homes that one generation may tell to the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayers for our nation. Cause us to live in harmony with one another and free our citizens from want, suffering, danger, and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our show kindness to the sick, including, and we're thankful that Rob Mantle has been discharged from the hospital and his home. We pray in thanksgiving for Lucia Rusty, who is home from the hospital as well after successful knee surgery. We pray for continued healing and strength for Dee Clagg, who apparently is coming home today from the hospital after successful heart surgery. We pray further for healing for Barbara Janice, 
was hospitalized in a hospital down in North Carolina with a stroke. We pray further for healing for Susan dealing with severe Crohn's disease and continued prayers for Doug, Kevin, Susan, and Bill, Chris, Alex, Mary Ann, and Chris. Be with each of them, dear Lord. Strengthen them in body and soul and work through the medical community, the professionals, to bring forth your healing touch. Dear Lord, never let them be in doubt that you hear their prayers. Relieve all pain and provide for those who suffer from any kind of hardship. Lord, in your mercy, comfort those who mourn by Jesus' words that he is the bread of life, and anyone who eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, in your mercy, and bless all those who commune this day, that reconcile to each other in Christ's body and blood, they may rejoice to receive your forgiveness through this precious gift, be strengthened in times of doubt, and be nourished in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, Father of our risen, ascended, and glorified Lord, who has promised that those who believe in Christ as the true and living bread will never hunger nor thirst. By your Holy Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and as he has promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we glorify your name and join in their unending praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Cup the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin, as often as you drink this, and do this in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. Come, the table of the Lord awaits your presence.
Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Father, your word is food for our souls and refreshment for our hearts. 
Thank you for sending your precious Son into the world to be the bread that came down from heaven to feed and strengthen us day by day. In the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Jesus, the bread of life, go forth in peace and serve the Lord.